All right, so today we are testing FSR3 versus DLSS3, both frame generation technologies in Immortals of Avium. Uh, we'll be testing it with an RTX 4070, and that's paired with a 12700K CPU, and that again is paired with the DDR4 4000 megatransfers per second memory cell 18. Right, so that was just a normal run at 1080p on the high preset or high settings, just to get a baseline number. Now we get to DLSS and FSR quality, and as you can see, there's really not much difference in the performance here. Even the PC latency is the same that you can see in the bottom left hand corner. I just left that up so just for uh, average PC latency. Uh, for the performance metrics, just uh, focus on MSI Afterburner. And as you can see, not really much difference there. Now we get to frame generation. We've got DLSS uh, 3 frame generation enabled and MSR 3 frame generation enabled. And once again, not <laughs> a big difference here. Currently, the 1% lows are slightly better using the NVIDIA technologies here, but uh, the average PC latency, once again, pretty much the same. The average uh, frame rate, pretty much the same. It's just the lows where the NVIDIA DLSS actually wins. Right, so now we're just moving on to 1440p. This is once again at native just to get a baseline number. Now, I just need to note that VSync is disabled, but VRR is also disabled. I found that VSync doesn't really make a difference for me, not in how the game feels or how it performs. It's because I've got a 165 hertz monitor and we rarely see those kind of frame rates, right? So now we've got DLSS and FSR set to quality. And as expected, <laughs> pretty much uh, similar performance, right? I know it sounds pretty boring. It seems similar in uh, every test, but uh, there are some differences which actually quite surprised me coming up, especially once we start enabling FSR 3 in the next run. But once again, with upscaling set to quality, there's no difference between the two. Now, once we enable frame generation with the same settings, you can see that the AMD technology is edging slightly ahead here. Right, the averages are quite a bit higher, around uh, at the end, I think it's about 13 frames per second higher. Now that's something that I did not expect, seeing that all the tests leading up to this one, the results were pretty identical, right? So now we're just moving on to 4K native, and uh, sure the RTX 4070 is definitely not a 4K GPU, especially in Immortals of Avium. It's not the best performing game uh, out there, and you can see we, we aren't even hitting uh, 30 frames per second or maintaining 30 frames per second I should say the average does show 30 but uh, I mean it's, it's pretty unplayable at this point now we just enable FSR and DLSS uh, quality again and now the NVIDIA GPU is uh, pulling ahead just without frame generation you can see that uh, the average is around 5 frames per second higher uh, and strangely enough the average PC latency is slightly lower but I do think it broke on the AMD side because it's just stuck on 102 but now once we enable frame generation just have a look at the difference then average PC latency on the Nvidia side it's almost half of that of the AMD side. The frame rate on the AMD side is around 10 to 15 percent higher but the average PC latency that that's where the big difference comes and it is actually noticeable this now whether these latency reportings can be trusted no, that's a completely different story you'd need an LDAT to, to compare that i do believe that capframe x uh, did that you can uh, find his results on twitter but let's just talk a little bit about the findings here as we saw at uh, 1080p even with frame generation, the performance was pretty much the same between the two technologies. Uh, even with the DLSS quality at 1080p and 1440p, performance pretty much the same. But the moment we enabled frame generation, the AMD side actually pulled ahead by a few frames per second. But the average PC latency was slightly higher than that of the NVIDIA side. And then when we got to 4K, FSR3 pulled ahead by quite a bit, but the input latency reported by GeForce Experience, uh, that was, uh, I mean, that was quite horrendous. It was uh, pretty much double and uh, 150 millisecond of input latency. Definitely not ideal and definitely not how you want to play the game. Right, so let's just talk about why I used the settings I did. I know people are going to complain, like they always complain about the settings. Right, so AMD recommends that you 
start off with at least 55 frames per second at 1080p and 70 frames per second at 1440p before enabling FSR or AFMF, whichever one you want to use. And that's pretty much the same as on Nvidia side. I found the sweet spot to be around 60 frames per second before enabling frame generation. Now, obviously, if you're not close to 60 frames per second, you can just use upscaling DLSS uh, super resolution or FSR super resolution to get close to 60 frames per second before you enable frame generation. Uh, that's what I'd recommend. Frame generation is not there to get you 60 frames per second. It's to there to get you from 60 frames per second to a high refresh rate experience, right? I know people will complain and say it's not a true high refresh rate experience because of the input latency and blah, blah, blah. The motion fluidity definitely represents a high refresh rate experience and uh, it's pretty good in my opinion. So then coming back to why I used the settings I did, at 1080p we are always getting around 100 frames per second so it doesn't really matter there. At 1440p I found that on the high settings we maintained around 60 frames per second that's where I wanted to start off with and then at 4k I wanted to see what it's like when the frame rate is actually below 60 frames per second when you start playing around with the FSR 3 and frame generation etc. Now I didn't do any native frame generation testing meaning without uh, upscaling because on this title or in this title you can't enable DLSS 3 frame generation without using upscaling but you can enable FSR 3 at native granted you use FSR anti-aliasing. Right, so I just wanted to see which technology gave you the better performance and we could see that the AMD FSR gave us a higher frame rate at certain resolutions and settings whereas uh, Nvidia gave us lower latency.